Today I want to tell you all about this amazing piece of kit here called the GB Operator. Basically, it's nothing more than a Game Boy cartridge slot for the computer that uses USB-C, but there's so much more to it than that, and I'm so excited to share it all with you in this week's video. Let's get started. So like I said, at its core, all this is, is a cartridge slot for the computer that allows you to play Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and original Game Boy games, all on the PC or on Mac, and I've tested it on both, and I'll be going into detail later on in the video, but there is a lot more to it than that. It can also function as a read and write device for cartridges as well. So if you've got a flashable Game Boy or Game Boy Advance cart, and you want to, for example, put a homebrew game on there, or put something that you've been working on onto a Game Boy cartridge and actually test it in a real system, you can also do that too. It also allows you to make backups of your actual physical game collection, which is fantastic for many reasons. Of course, if you just want to transfer all of your official games onto an EverDrive, this is a great way to do that. But as well as that, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I talk a lot about homebrew games for the Game Boy. And a lot of those, like the Shapeshifter, which I'll be doing a review on soon, don't actually have ROM versions online. So before I got this, there was actually no way of me getting the ROM off here onto the computer to be able to use it in other things like an EverDrive, or to put it on the analog pocket, or just to play it on the PC itself. But with this, you can actually put the cartridge in, take the ROM off the cartridge and save it as a file on your computer, which then of course you can do whatever you want with. So that is fantastic, but there's even more to it than that. This can also back up all of your save data. So if you're worried about batteries going in cartridges, or maybe you've found a better save file online that you want to add to your official game, you can actually do this through here too, using the save, read and write feature in the program, which is really cool. Another really cool addition to this, and something that I didn't know this was actually going to be able to do until I picked it up, if you put the Game Boy Camera in here, it can actually read the files on the Game Boy Camera and allow you to save those original images onto your computer so that you can upload them to Instagram, save them on Facebook, whatever you want to do with the pictures, you can get them right off here. Unfortunately, you can't actually run the camera from this, so you can't like use it for a webcam or anything. Not that you would really want to, but it's kind of a shame that the option isn't there, but the fact that you can take the pictures off this is a really cool addition, and it's just a nice little extra feature for collectors like me. And there's actually some really good Instagram pages where people have used the Game Boy camera to take some really stunning artwork. There's a few other really cool features as well, so if you use a controller with Rumble, through this, you can actually use games for the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance that featured Rumble compatibility, and it actually feels really cool to play those Game Boy games with Rumble support on a big screen like this. If this controller actually has Rumble, I'm not really sure though. Oh wow, it does! It's really good as well! There's no way of showing that off on camera, but I can feel it. Just boom. You'll just have to imagine. So they're all really cool features and way better than any other solution I've got for playing Game Boy games, but that is not the main reason I wanted this. The main reason I wanted this was to make it a lot easier for me to capture footage from Game Boy games to actually use on this YouTube channel, and to use over on Twitch as well, and I actually tried that out recently and it worked really well, way better than I was expecting. It was a struggle to get it all set up and running because there are a few quirks with the program that comes with this piece of hardware that I'm not a huge fan of. For one thing, when you're playing the game, if you even slightly move the cursor over the screen, a bar pops up at the bottom showing the system settings and the volume adjuster and stuff, and it takes a while to disappear, so if you're capturing the game window in order to stream it to OBS, to capture gameplay or to stream it over on Twitch, then you have that unsightly bar going across the bottom. So what I ended up doing was extending the window to the top and bottom of the screen so that when I hovered over it, the bar wouldn't actually appear over the gameplay and then just crop it back down in OBS. And that seemed to work quite well. There were a few other issues that I ran into, mostly around the way the screen audio recording works on Mac, but I managed to figure all that out in the end. And I have to say that using this to capture Game Boy games is so much easier than anything else I've done in the past. 
I had to go over there, plug the GameCube in, find the disc for the Game Boy Player, set it all up, get all the capture stuff sorted. It was just a bit of a nightmare and then there was always a delay of it coming over to the TV if I wanted to stream games. But with this, I've just left this, sat next to my laptop and it just works absolutely perfectly now I've got everything set up. Another really cool feature that this has got and something that is definitely very helpful to collectors like me is the ability to check whether a cartridge is real or fake. And through using this I actually found out that a few games I wasn't entirely sure whether they were real or fake actually both turned out to be fake. And look at them here, you can't really tell that they're bad quality or anything, especially with Kirby. I honestly thought this was a genuine copy for the longest time. So, thanks to this, I've actually managed to figure out that that's a fake, and now I can try and track down an official copy. It does get a little bit confused sometimes. I did try it out with those, like, weird fake 101 carts for the Game Boy Advance, and it thought that was an official version of Final Fantasy VI for some reason. So, it's not always 100% accurate, but it does give you a good idea of the majority of your collection. So, if that's something you're interested in, then this is definitely worth picking up for that reason alone. And talking of features, when you actually get around to play in one of these games, there's a ton of different options in the software, so let's have a look and see what those are. So here's how the program looks as soon as you turn it on. Basically, once you put a cartridge in, you'll get the box art for the cartridge on the side, as well as the status of the cartridge as well, so you can check to see whether it was official or not, and whether it's a read-only or a read-write cartridge. You also get the name of the game, and the region it was released in, as well as the developer or publisher, and a little brief description about the game as well. If you go on the data side, this is where you can actually download the game so that you can actually take the ROM off the cartridge. So let me show you how that works. Press start, basically give it a name and tell it where to save. Press save and depending on the size of the game, it might take a while and then basically there's the game. So once you've got that file, then you can put it onto an emulator or you can put it onto an analog pocket or whatever other kind of flash cart you've got. So that is a really cool feature. If you do have a rewritable cartridge such as this one here, if you go on the data option, you do get a few other options as well. You can also upload a game which allows you to select a ROM and upload it back to the cartridge. But I'm getting a bit carried away. Let's start with an original Game Boy game and just show you how it works in the system. So when you press launch, the game boots up straight away. And you can already see the first issue, and that's the fact that this menu bar here comes up over the screen. So what I did in order to fix that was actually create a second tab on here and just simply extend the top and the bottom of the window like that. And then we have a nice clean output inside OBS. And I just cropped it to fit into the resolution that I'm using for my videos. But there's so much more to this program that I want to show you as well. So let's have a look at some of the settings in here and I can go through them. There's a lot to get through, but it's all really interesting. So stick with it. So let's just start at the top. So the first thing we've got is the option to auto save back to the cartridge, which is great. So that basically means if the game has a save option, then you can actually play it using this software, save it on this software. And as soon as you take it out of there and put it back into a Game Boy, you'll be able to carry on from where you left off, which is brilliant. The next is an option for fast forward. So on the actual software itself, you've got these two arrows here and you can see if you click them, the game speeds up by the amount that you chose in here. So you can go as fast as five times. So if we save that and then press fast forward, then you can see it's actually going five times as fast, which of course would not be very playable, but it's great if you want to skip some boring segments in RPGs. And you can also go as slow as 0.25 times as well. So that is what that looks like, which again might be useful, especially for some action games. So that's great that that's included. It's definitely helped me get through some of the slower paced games for the system. Now next, you can actually detect what kind of Game Boy you want it to boot up in. Auto detect will be able to pick it out most of the time, but if you, say for example, if you were playing one of the Zelda Oracle games, you could actually set it to be a Game Boy Advance instead of a Game Boy Color, so you get the extra Game Boy Advance options. For the Game Boy original games, it just gives them one of the default color palettes. And we'll get back onto color palettes in just a minute. I'll skip over these two. These are basically if you want to use custom BIOS instead of the built-in ones, or if you want to be able to skip the intro animation, which I'm not too bothered about. Something I am more interested in though is the color palette options. And there is a fantastic range of choices here. So you've obviously got the classic grayscale option, as you can see, just a basic black and white image. You've also got option to show it as the original DMG style, which is the pea green color that everyone loves so much. 
One thing I wish they would improve with this menu system is the fact that the save button's hide enough down the bottom, so you have to always scroll back up to where you were if you want to check whether a, a change you made actually made a difference or not. It'd be great if there was like a little checkbox down here or if they moved it to this side section, maybe. Maybe that's something they could implement in the future. It is still in beta, but I'll show you a few more of these. So there's the Game Boy Pocket theme. I actually quite like that one. There's a whole load of different options. This brown one is quite nice. I actually really like that style. It kind of reminds me of how Game Boy games used to look in magazines back in the day when they had screenshots on the pages. So I might end up using this one for my Game Boy videos in the future. Not sure. It also includes all of the Super Game Boy um, templates as well. So I can't re really remember what they are, but there you go. So if you have a preference for any of the Super Game Boy colors, you've also got that option too. Which is really cool that they included all that. Another thing that's really cool, you can actually use Super Game Boy borders. And if you put certain Game Boy games in there, like this one I've got here, Donkey Kong Land 3. So when you boot this game up, you can see that it actually uses the Super Game Boy border. But that is just really cool to be able to play these games as they were shown on a TV screen. It just feels a little bit more natural. And I did actually play these games on the Super Game Boy quite a lot as a kid, so to have the option to record with those Super Game Boy borders is really cool, and I'll definitely try and do that for as many games as I can in the future. Now for another great feature which is especially important for Game Boy Color games, that is the color correction option. So usually, as you can see, the colors on emulators for Game Boy Color games are quite garish, but that is not how they actually used to look. So if we go back up to the color correction option and choose Game Boy Color from this menu instead, you can see that the color palette becomes a lot more muted and a lot more easy on the eye. So this is definitely something that's going to help a lot with recording Game Boy Color games in the future, especially considering not even the Game Boy interface on the GameCube really had an accurate color option like this, which I'm sure a lot of people would prefer to see rather than the bright colours that we had on the screen a minute ago. Another really important option here is interframe blending, and I'm really glad they included this because it is a real issue, especially playing it on the GameCube. So a great example for this is the Famicom Mini version of Super Mario Bros. So with it disabled, hopefully you'll be able to make it out on the video, but you can see how things are kind of flickering, like the top of the mountain there, or the middle of the bricks there. There's a few different options, but as soon as we turn it on, you'll immediately be able to see the difference. So as soon as I press save here, watch what happens to the mountain there on the right. You can instantly see that all of the flicker has stopped and the game becomes a lot more stable. There's also a smart option as well, which only applies it to the parts of the game where it's actually necessary. And I've got a great game to demo that as well. So a great example here is F-Zero. So have a look at the map in the corner here. If you're watching the video in 60 frames a second, you'll see that it's flickering in and out of existence. And that was because on the original GBA, the actual refresh rate of the pixels on the display weren't as fast as on one of these modern computer monitors. So those flickers would actually blend together and give, give it a kind of transparency effect. But what you can do thanks to this option here is actually remove that flicker and try and set it back to being transparent. So if you choose smart, it should actually only apply it to the map and affect nothing else in the game. So now you can see the rest of the game is perfectly smooth. You've still got the really nice subtle details of the ship, but you've also got the nice smooth map in the corner as well. And that's fantastic because that was a problem with emulators and with playing the games on the GameCube and stuff for a long time. They tried to fix it on the GameCube, but it never quite worked as well as this. So I'm really glad that this is an option. And again, it's going to make recording games look a lot nicer on YouTube in the future. And while we're on a GBA game, this will be a good time to show off the audio filters as well. So I've got it actually enabled to about 25%, but if I disable it, and if we just turn the sound up on the game for a second... And then if I enable the audio filter and maybe make it a bit more prominent, I'll put it on 60%. Just listen to the difference here. Maybe that's a bit of an extreme example, but the GBA especially has a kind of low hiss to its audio. So if you set this to about 15, 20%, the game should still sound clear, but it will actually get rid of that low hiss and just make a better overall audio experience. So it's great that that's an option too. Now, this is something really cool. This is the option for enabling rumble in the games. And 
I've got a PS4 controller that I'm playing on here on the Mac, and I've also got an Xbox controller for my PC as well, and both of them support Rumble in games. It's even got a solar level, so if you're playing Boktai and you want to set the sunlight to a certain degree, you can also do that. And you've also got the option for Game Boy Player Rumble as well, because certain games supported Rumble on the GameCube if they were played on the Game Boy Player, like the Mario and Luigi game. There's also a few performance things here, which I haven't really dived that far into because the, both the computers that I've got don't really need to have frame skips or anything to be able to run the games at full speed. But if you do have a lower end PC or Mac, then you can tweak these settings here to try and get it to run a bit smoother for you, but just leave these as default, I think. There's also a few options for the device itself, such as choosing how you want the LED on the front to look, and there's a few more options coming soon. You've also got gamepad settings here, so as you can see I'm using a PS4 controller and you can rebind the keys, so it's going to move the game, but you can just rebind the keys to whatever you want. Like that, and then just press save, and you can also do the same on a keyboard if you need to. And the last option is the save vault, and this allows you to find all the saves that the GB operator has actually taken off the cartridge itself. So if we expand this section here, you can see that there's my save for F-Zero GP Legend. And if I wanted to use this save for a different system, perhaps, or if I wanted to send it to a friend or post it online or something, then you can just go in there, grab the save file, and then you can just put that wherever you need it. I really hope this was an enjoyable and informative video. If you want to get one for yourselves, I'll put a link in the description. I don't know whether they're still in stock or not, but fingers crossed you can pick one up if you are interested. If you want to see more about this, then go ahead and check out my Twitch channel in the description below, because I actually streamed this for about four hours the other day to test it out before making this video, and I had a great time. I plan to stream on there about one time a week, so go ahead and give me a follow over there. Of course, subscribe here if you enjoyed the video, and check out Patreon if you want behind the scenes access and now video versions of my podcasts as well. I'm up to loads of stuff as you can tell but check all the links in the description and I'll see you on this channel very soon for the next Retro Break video. Goodbye!